Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Pragati Vichar Literature Festival Author Marathon 2022. And today I am Chaitanya Arora with you. Joined by us, we have Mr. Devashish Mukherjee, who has been a journalist for 40 years. He has worked for numerous publications such as the Hindustan Times, The Week, and Business Today. He has actively written on the Uttar Pradesh politics as well as the national politics and is now an editorial consultant with a leading multilateral financial institution. He has recently launched his book, The Disruptor, How Vishwanath Pratap Singh Shook India. Welcome to the Authors Marathon, sir. Uh, thank you, Chetan. Thank you very much for inviting me to the Pragati Vichar Literature Festival. In fact, I feel privileged. Please ask me whatever you would like me to answer. It is a pleasure to have you, sir. What is the book about? Yeah, the book, uh, here's the book. It's, um, uh, it's a biography of the former Prime Minister Vishwanath Pratap Singh, who was a fairly controversial figure uh, during his brief uh, Prime Ministership, and even before that, in fact. So um, it just looks into his life, you know, the major incidents of his life, and in the context of his, of his times, you know, the issues he... Uh, tackled and um, and so forth. They, uh, the issues that he had to deal with are the same that we um, find even today, that, uh, that confront us even today. Primarily, uh, one was corruption and he was a great proponent of um, transparency and uh, eliminating corruption and he tried his best when he was finance minister and the Rajiv Gandhi to do so. Uh, the second point was um, uh, caste disparities. As you know, he's best known for having um, um, implemented the uh, Mandal Commission report, which gave um, reservations for the first time to the other backward classes in uh, central government uh, services. And thirdly, with the, this issue of the communal problem, uh, this, uh, which again today uh, the sectarianism and communalism are uh, bedeviling us. So, uh, so in that sense, I felt he was quite relevant even today. And uh, also his life is very dramatic in every way. So, and uh, I felt that his contribution was not adequately, uh, his contribution in transforming the political scene in India uh, had not been sufficiently highlighted. So I decided to write this. Yeah. So, uh, sir, this book looks like more than just a piece of biography. Rather, it looks like a serious work of history. So what was the inspiration behind the book? Yeah, the inspiration was really the, um, the story of um, Vishnath Pratap Singh and the fact that it had not been um, delineated in the same way before that he had, um, in the context of what he was trying to do, the, the political situation at the time, and how it differs from uh, the one today, and how it is similar to as well to the one today. So I thought I'd um, uh, take a look. And I, I mean, I can say this upfront, that I am a supporter of Vipi Singh broadly. I mean, not everything he did, and uh, I recognize the, the what his critics say as well, but overall, I support the things he did, including um, uh, reservation, uh, bringing reservation for the um, uh, other backward classes, as I said. So I wanted to highlight all that and um, so that people of um, your generation and uh, others would know what has happened before and how our history has been shaped. Actually, one more thing we can say that, you know, today the main poles of the um, politic of Indian politics are uh, the Congress and the BJP, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and uh, there seems to be little in between. You know? the, and uh, I mean, those who attack, they criticize the BJP as all said to be pro-Congress and vice versa. Those who criticize Rahul Gandhi or the Congress are said to be, um, you know, uh, supporters of um, Hindu nationalism or whatever. But actually there was, uh, People should know that there was once a third force, or which was at that time, in fact, a second force, which was a secular democratic alternative to the Congress, and which many of us, when we were young, we were we were supporters of that. We were not supporting the Congress in those days. So, um, 
it uh, i felt it was important that people know uh, um, that this that this force used to be there and now it has got dissipated and scattered and in many places died out altogether uh, but uh, it is important to know what uh, has come before right so uh, i i'm really curious about one thing vp singh has been such an influential influential figure and you have managed to write a 500 plus page book on him especially his autobiography so what what were the points of problem you faced in terms of authenticity of incidents while writing about his life of course you have to know what ha happened yes that that is um, i mean you have to do your research and double check so my uh, what i had at my disposal the, old, the the what can we call the new thing in this book was an old interview that vp uh, singh had given the national uh, the nehru memorial library it's about 900 pages long and the just the rough transcript was there so i happened to stumble across that also so that was another trigger and in which he it was this was given in the last uh, years of his life and looking back on his entire career right from his childhood and all the um, issues that arose during his um, prime ministership and before that his finance ministership and when he was an opposition leader i mean he went into the entire gamut and i found many new things there that uh, which had not been um, mentioned before or people didn't know about at all and i combined that with um, uh, um talking to as many of his uh, associates as i could meet who were still alive because of course he belongs to the generation even before mine so not many are around so whoever i could meet i met and it's about 30 40 people and i looked at the newspaper archives just to make sure that nobody was making tall claims and magazine archives and uh, correlated them you know and and whatever other documents um uh, that one could find or that were available of that time including parliamentary debates and stuff like that so and uh, then uh, you know sifting the two uh, all these things um, what seemed to me most authentic um, that's what i put forward and sometimes i've said that it's hard to say the what is the truth here but uh, this is what x says and this is what y says and what z says so that people can make up their minds So, uh, sir, which chapter is your favorite from the book? See, my favorite. Um, see, I have written it. So, all the chapters <laughs> are my favorite here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, th I thought on the Mandal Commission um, chapters, the one in, um, I think, chapter rather the part, the, the one in part seven, I think it is. Yeah, uh, that was the most. In that would be the most interesting for people today. first the mandal commission and then the whole fight over the ayodhya temple which is only now i mean the temple is still being built at, but at least the court verdict verdict has come and there is some resolution there at that time it was a very big um, controversy very big controversy yeah and in fact the and the interesting thing that he that he had found a solution to that problem but it didn't work out that's another matter which would not have antagonized either Hindus or Muslims, it would not have required a, a, the, the case to go on for so long. You know, so I found all that very interesting. So, sir, uh, you you've researched a lot. You had literal, literally a thorough research and a background check of everything. Did you feel that you are related to the eighth prime minister in any way? me no no he was a very strong and very firm guy you know i am very soft and pliable so i am no i don't think so at all but there were certain things to admire about him is i mean being in politics trying to um, emphasize the financial probity you know that's the very big thing you know it's um, and what i found very interesting also was that his attitude to power you know uh, like um, politician is in politics they may say they they are there to serve the people but actually they are there for power they can use their power to serve the people that is no doubt about it you can use the power or misuse the power um many misuse it some use it well also um and some do a mix but you are into power but um vishnu pratap singh strangely was ambivalent about power 
he was not very sure whether he wanted to be chief minister or, um, or finance minister or prime minister. I mean, he wanted to, and yet he didn't want to. You know, he didn't want to be seen as wanting to. Now, so I found that extremely interesting for a politician being ambivalent about not very sure whether he wants power. Um, um, it's, a, it's a very strange phenomenon. And I found that uh, fascinating. There were many fascinating things about him, you know, for instance, uh, right from his childhood. If you start um, the way he was brought up, he, he comes from one of those Raja families, okay? which are the huge zamindars. It's different from Maharajas, who were actually ruled their kingdoms. These guys did not rule in that sense. I mean, these, these were part of British India. He was the Raja of a place called Manda. Okay. Um, the, it was part of British India, but within the, though being a part, they had tremendous powers and there was a real opulence and luxury they lived in, right? Now, he, but he had this peculiar problem that he was adopted. He, uh, he, was, he had been born to one Raja and then he was adopted by another. And that made him very insecure because this other person who uh, adopted him, obviously his biological father had not done enough due diligence because he was an alcoholic and all that. And a widower and an alcoholic, so that, that gave him a, quite a tough time. And then he, when he came into politics, it sort of, he also, um, his career exemplifies um, all the, also the progress of Indian politics because the moment he came into politics in 1969, okay, that was, uh, the, within a few months, he, he became an MLA in the um, UP Assembly, right? And uh, within a few months of his becoming MLA, the Congress had that historic 1969 split when Indira Gandhi split it into Congress R and Congress O, because she was uh, she was she was being hemmed in by the other uh, uh, old past party bosses, you know, and wanted to you know do what do, do her own thing basically. So he had to choose where to go, and, um, uh, and the human side of it is that all the people who had helped him uh, initially, they chose to be, stay with the old Congress. I mean, they're not with Indira Gandhi. Whereas he chose to go with Indira Gandhi because he had his reasons also. She had helped him in a very crucial way too. So um, he was, I mean, undying loyalty he had to Indira Gandhi. So that uh, exemplifies the situation of the 60s, you know. Then in the 70s, there was the emergency and he was a minister during the emergency. So how he reacted. So that again brings out the, um, the the situation in the 70s, in the 1970s. Yeah. And thereafter, Indira Gandhi lost the election um, when she lifted the emergency immediately after that and we had the Janta Party in power. So during that time, they were hounded, well, naturally, because she had locked up all these people. So uh, they, they were in a vengeful mood also. So he had his own problems. He, was, he went to jail three times and there are those experiences. And then there were the 80s when he had a sort of blistering pace uh, his rise, his rise was absolutely at a blistering pace. Uh, tremendous um, rise. I mean, it, it's, I think it's unparalleled in a politician going from, um, I mean, from being just an MP to um, becoming prime minister within 10 years. First, he was the UP chief minister. Then he gave that up. He had resigned over some issue because, as I said, he had this problem of, he was ambivalent about power. He was not willing to stick to power under any. Um, I mean, to stick to his chair under any circumstances. Certain circumstances arose because of which he resigned. Uh, and um, then he, um, Rajiv Gandhi made him finance minister. He was Rajiv Gandhi's most trusted um, um, lieutenant at one time. And he was the one where before um, 1991, when Manmohan Singh and um, Nasim Rao transformed the Indian economy to give it a completely different tilt. He had tried to do the same thing, you know, move a little away from socialism and try to uh, encourage the free market. Then, then he fell out with Rajiv Gandhi with, uh, over uh, the, because side by side with encouraging the free market, he was also trying to curb uh, corporate corruption. And that got a uh, lot of people very upset, a lot of um, top businessmen and industrialists very upset. So then he lost out. 
Then he launched a campaign against Rajiv Gandhi. <coughs> then he went into this whole issue of uh, defense deals and, and um, uh, whether you know kickbacks were being paid during defense deals, and that's an issue even today. You see this Rafael affair. There are all kinds of um, um, allegations being made, so we won't go into those. But um, that's an issue that persisted from that time. And then finally, he became prime minister. He defeated the Congress, which was an incredible thing to do because in 1984, Congress had won 404 out of 540 seats. Or, um, and then, of course, when he was prime minister, soon he was embroiled in his own crises because he had got together a whole lot of opposition people who had nothing in common to defeat Rajiv Gandhi. So, and pushed to a corner, he brought in the Mandal Commission report. He enforced the Mandal Commission report. And that raised a hysterical kind of agitation. So all that, um, I thought was fascinating. And then his decline was also very fast. I mean, uh, he lost the uh, 1991 election. I mean, he, his government fell even before that, in late uh, 1990. And uh, thereafter, the Janata Party just kind of, over the next um, 10 years, just disintegrated. So it was, um, you know, I don't know if you're interested in, pol how interested you are in politics, but it's a really dramatic um, decade. More than um, two decades of absolute drama, 80s and 90s. Yeah. So, uh, sir, like now, there's there's a lot you have read there's a lot you have researched about him if you were given a chance to make one change in bp singh's history what would that be and rather why would that be well i would think that you could have there no two actually one is that with rajiv gandhi to seem like more of a misunderstanding rather than a, than a genuine conflict you know <laughs> So if he could have cleared up that misunderstanding, the issue there was that he, Rajiv Gandhi made him finance minister and allowed him to enforce his very strict notions of um, probity in uh, copper, I mean, to, you know, launch raids um, um, and so forth. So, um, if, but then at the same time, Rajiv got this impression that he was trying to uh, find out things about him because he got the impression that he was trying to investigate Amitabh Bachchan. Whereas, in fact, he was investigating this company, Reliance Industry. So that's another weird... Um, um, so if they could have cleared up that, um, uh, and, uh, that confusion or that misunderstanding, and then I think they could have worked together, continued to work together. And uh, the, the, I mean, the history of India would have been different, you know. But somehow Rajiv became very suspicious that th this guy, I gave him a chance, and now he's trying to push me out. That's the impression he got that he's trying to dig up dirt on me and uh, expose that I am not, um, you know, uh, he is corrupt. And whereas he was trying to expose somebody else, and certain people created that problem. So that was one thing. And the other thing is that when he, he was going to bring all the opposition people together and um, it, some greater understanding, some better um, you know, groundwork should have been done. Because the moment he came to power, each of these guys whom he had um, taken um, in his own, in his team, you know, started behaving as if they were the bosses and not he and disregarding him. And that, that is what led to the crisis. And thereafter came the Mandal Commission report. Again, the Mandal Commission report could have been introduced more, uh, let's say, gently you know, and less abruptly as it was done, than it was done. Though I don't um, deny that uh, I support the decision to give, the basic decision to give a reservation to OPCs is a positive decision. It's a progressive decision. But the manner in which it was brought may well have been uh, it was indeed abrupt and it was done basically to survive. So I think these two places, yes, he should be, he could have um, sort of handled things better. I don't know, I mean, being, being in his shoes, if I, it was, it was possible, but in hindsight, it seems as if these were two areas where he sort of screwed up. <laughs> 
sir so you you have named this book the dis the disruptor how yeah. vishwanath pratap singh shook india what do you think made him the disruptor that was his nature i think he, he sort of um, had this inclination to stir up things he didn't develop overnight in the beginning he was quite a you know under indira gandhi especially he was a quite a what you call a loyal soldier mm -hmm. no, i'm not questioning her in any way but gradually it developed a name in that um, a kind of uh, one is that emphasis on uh, eradicating corruption and the other is this social justice business that uh, that all sections of society should be uh, from, um, empowered and uh, included in the um, power structure power structure yeah. so so this somebody did disrupt you know he, he did disrupt in at least three four times he did disrupt very much that's why i called it the so uh, now do you think do you think that bp singh does not get the posthumous attention he deserves for oh, that of course yeah i mean he not even a stamp has been issued in his honor i mean all kinds of people you know little known or hardly known you you have stamps about them and about famous people so obviously you do i mean it's very basic you there is no stamp is the basic thing then there is not a road or a street or anything named after vp singh in all of india including in islamabad there isn't a single um, college or institution of any kind uh, named after vp singh i mean his memory is um, uh, more or less obliterated I mean, and there's nothing to remember him by so what do you think is saying that how much he did i mean how, the impact he had i mean he had tremendous impact what do you think sir is the reason behind this why is there not the attention he deserves see i think that see they today we have only two poles of indian politics right congress and bjp and he ended mm -hmm. up upsetting both of them first he fell out with rajiv gandhi and then when the bjp tried to bring its stem uh, ram mandir agenda he 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 fought against them also and he became implacably opposed to this um, um, attempt to divide uh, society uh, along religious lines which basically was was what the ram mandir controversy did so uh, so the bjp also hates him so when the congress hates him and the bjp hates him, then there is nothing and the, and even the people who can be called his inheritors i mean people who Uh, the parties that came out of the Janata Party, um, Janata Dal, like uh, the Samajwadi Party in UP or the um, Lali Yadav, the Rashtriya Janata Dal in uh, Bihar, or many others, you know, they, if, uh, you can say PDP in Kashmir and this um, JDU in uh, um, or, uh, I don't know what uh, this uh, Devagoda's party, uh, they were uh, they. Um, they were somehow you know they were more keen to um, make an impression themselves their leaders rather than talk about vp singh from whom they sort of drew their uh, um, their initial sustenance so these guys were neither the congress nor the bjp nor these guys in the middle wanted to do anything for him so there he goes uh, something was start uh, yeah we lost we lost your audio could you please uh, say again what you were saying so what was the question was um, about so, why, why he is neglected uh, or yeah, he exactly. not been given any attention see, yeah see the, the two main poles of the of indian politics today are the congress and the bjp mm -hmm. and we we seeing somehow in his political career ended up upsetting both of them you are hearing me Yeah. you can hear me right isn't it yeah yeah uh first he upset the congress because he um, went after rajiv gandhi right <laughs> but and, and in fact he took the help of the bjp to win the 1989 election but then again uh, when the bjp brought up this issue of <coughs> uh, the ram mandir and uh, began pursuing it aggressively he felt it was highly divisive and it was um, uh, you know dividing hindus and muslims and he opposed that as well especially 
uh, setting up a temple at that spot before the court had given its verdict. He was, in, and, and in fact, to stop them, he was ready, he sacrificed his government for that because they were supporting him and when he stopped them, he, uh, they withdrew the support. So he was, um, so BJP also hates him and Congress also hates him. And um, the people who benefited from him directly, the, the new parties that were formed, like the Samajwadi Party in UP or the um, Rashtriya um, Janata Dal in Bihar, you know, which came, came directly, and many other, the many other parties, mm -hmm. they would probably want to emphasize themselves, right? Uh, rather than talk about uh, the man who gave them their initial sustenance. So they, uh, so each one of them were more, more interested in building their own careers, their leaders. So in the bargain, he was, um, he's been uh, sort of uh, neglected. I'm sure, sir, your book would be a big hit in the coming I times, and, so. and 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 especially especially for for people like us who have hardly you know had the we we really we have not really seen the real face of what the history of Indian politics was, and of course, for, yeah, 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 true. And for books like these, I'm sure they are going to be a big hit in the coming times, and we're hoping that you keep that you keep writing more such books. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank it was it was it was a real pleasure to have you with us, sir. Thank it you so much for being here. Also, and you gave me such a good forum to talk about my book, you know. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir.